Guys, what is going on? It is Saturday morning, and it's time to continue with the Empowered Conference. You guys having a good time so far? Come on, let me hear you. You having a good time so far? Absolutely incredible. I can tell you this. It is unbelievable that we have had the opportunity we've had to come together. And uh, I told them I needed a really expensive stand for my water bottle, so they brought the bike up here, which I'm very grateful for. Um, Listen, this is our morning session. Uh, We're going to be brief this morning. We'll have a little break. And uh, got some exciting things going on this afternoon, which I think uh, you're going to have a blast with. Really excited about the fitness challenge. Really excited about the cornhole tournament. Really excited about the business leaders panel. There's great things happening, so make sure you stick around. And uh, going to be a great time. If you got your Bibles, I want you to grab them. you got something you can look at, smartphone, tablet, something. Grab it. And uh, one key scripture, three lies, one promise, a prayer, and we're out the door. Okay, so that's what's about to happen. <clears throat> we're looking at 2 Peter chapter 1. That's where I want you to be. I'll read a scripture uh, before I get to that. But that's where I want you to stay focused. 2 Peter chapter 1. And uh, as always, pray grace on the camera operators. I do not do well at sitting still. So, hallelujah. Um, As you find that, guys, I don't have to remind you, I don't have to make you aware that there's an all-out assault on masculinity or masculine identity, especially in our culture. I don't have to convince you of that. I don't have to tell you that. You're well aware. We deal with it every single day. In the media, in society, men have been reduced to a paycheck Uh, Men have been reduced to pleasure seekers that might be able to provide a few dollars, so let's keep them around. Men have been reduced to idiots that can't really function properly in a family or in society. So I just want to encourage you this morning with those words. Uh, No, I want to tell you, if we agree with what society says, then it will trap us and it will bring us into the prison of agreeing with what the enemy says about who we are as men. And I want to tell you today, God has given you everything you need. He has empowered you to live the godly life that he's called you to live. Can I get an amen this morning? He's given it to you. So I want to read this scripture to you, and we're going to talk about it some. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 8. Let's read all of those right now. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through, through these, talking about his promises, through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you, men, me, we may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Verse 5, for this very reason, Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness mutual affection, to mutual affection love. For if you possess, men, if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray for us. Father, here we are. Here we are, Lord, and we need a word from you. God, a word from Nathan won't get it done this morning, God. A word from you will change our lives. God, that's what we need. It's what I'm asking you for, Lord. Here I am. I pray you'd use me. In Jesus' name, amen. God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Earlier this week, I was, I've was i been praying for a quite some time about this morning session and what I would share with you. And the Lord woke me up and spoke four words to me. It was 5.30 in the morning. I wasn't dreaming about anything. I wasn't thinking about anything. I woke up four words. Now, I can tell you it was the Lord because it wasn't necessarily the first four things you would think of when you wake up in the morning, okay? And I think you'll feel me. Uh, first word, emasculated. Second word, emancipated. Third word, entitled. Fourth word, empowered. Three lies, one promise. And I feel like the Lord wanted me to highlight to you this morning these things. Guys, can I remind you of a scripture that you know 
in here, but we don't always remember in here. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us in verse 12 that for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. What does that mean? We read that first part and say our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That's the key. Key in on that. But against the rulers and authorities and powers. We start thinking, see, I knew my boss was the problem. The, it's the rulers. It's the president. You know? That's what the issue is. It's the people in authority. No, what it said, it's not against flesh and blood. Rulers, powers, authority in the dark world that operate in the atmosphere. Men, can I tell you, the enemy's got us so distracted, getting mad with our wives, getting frustrated with our co-workers, angry at our boss, just absolutely ticked off with our brother or our sister, our, our church family member, somebody, our dad, all the things that we've been through. We're so angry and we're swinging at the air, expending all of this energy trying to get our frustration out. And it's like swinging at the wind because that's not the problem. Our battle... It's not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers. It's against the enemy of our souls. Now, there's many ways that the enemy attacks us, but there were three that the Lord showed me specifically, and I want to talk about it in these brief moments. <clears throat> the first one, in speaking in the concept of being empowered, the first lie that the enemy can speak to us is about being emasculated. Now, if you don't know what the word emasculated means, it comes from the root word for castrate. If you don't know what that means, I encourage you to ask your brother sometime during the break, but just know it could make for an awkward conversation. I just want you to be prepared for that. Um, and if you don't know, I ain't going to tell you, so I don't want you to be uh, distracted. But ultimately, emasculated doesn't just mean what you're thinking. Emasculated, the, the dictionary definition says to be purposefully made weaker or lesser. To purposefully be made weaker or lesser. And the problem is, guys, when we talk about our identity in Christ, that he's already given us everything we need. Isn't that what the scripture just said? Didn't we just read this? Didn't you write that down on your notepad? No, I didn't, Pastor Nathan, but I'm about to. Praise the Lord. Write it down, 2 Peter chapter 1. If you got anything this morning, that's all I want you to remember is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. I want you to meditate on it. He's given us everything we need for life and godliness through his promises. Well, Nathan, if he's given it to me, how come I'm not operating in it? Great question. Great question. And if you're really asking it, I believe the Lord will give us some answers. Because he's a good father. He doesn't just stare at us with a blank stare. He responds when we call. See, the problem is a lot of guys have bought into the idea that they've been emasculated. And this is rooted in something. It's rooted in a spirit of rejection. It's the lie of the enemy that says, I just can't. I want to. I probably need to. I just don't have what it takes. I can't. Now, I don't care if you had an amazing father or you had an absent father or you hate your father, and I'm praying the Lord will heal that. But regardless of what you've been through, that's not the issue. It's when we partner and we allow our identity to be wrapped up in a spirit of rejection that emasculates us as men and it does not allow us to be. Lie number one. I'll talk about it some more in a moment. Some of you guys were at the Catalyst Getaway we did. Where are my Catalyst Getaway guys at? Some of you guys went to the Whitewater Center. Praise the name. Man, we had a great time. That was awesome. That was awesome. I did not... Uh, well, no, that's a lie. I did fall out of the boat. That's none of your business. Um, I did great mostly. A couple of us, a couple of us um, overfilled a boat, and we may or may not have flipped it in the shallow end. Now, I can't confirm that, and we don't have any video proof that I'm aware of, but um, we had a great time at the Catalyst Getaway. But one thing the Lord spoke to my heart to share about was about dealing with being shut down 
And I talked about King David in chapter 11 of uh, 2 Samuel, about the David and Bathsheba. I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm just mentioning it because some of you guys were there, and we'll go back to it. Why did, he, why did he end up falling into all the things he fell into with Bathsheba and dealing with adultery and dealing with murder and all these things? Well, what happened is he got shut down. Why? Because in 2 Samuel 10, he tried to honor somebody. He just wanted to show them respect, and it was thrown in his face, and he was dishonored, and he got shut down because he had felt rejected and if we don't allow the Lord to come in and meet us in this place we will not have the full capacity to be empowered he's given you everything you need for life and godliness but man we all know this we got some M&Ms can we just praise the Lord for the M&Ms that are on the table we got some M&Ms on the table okay we can only put so many in there until it's full and then they just they don't go in anymore and until we empty those out, we cannot, there's no capacity to add anything new. Anybody hearing me? So we, ask, we have to ask the Lord to meet us in this place. The second lie that the enemy will give to us to try to get us to find our identity in. When we, all we want to be is empowered. That's all we want. But this group feels like we can't. We want to, we just can't. Because we've been shut down. I think the Lord's going to meet you today. Matter of fact, I know so. The second group is the group that says, I, it's all rooted in being emancipated. Now, if you don't know what emancipated means, the legal definition means to just be out from under rule and authority. We hear a lot about in culture about kids now that want to be emancipated from their parents at an earlier age, and so kids can go to court and divorce their parents. Now, there's, maybe you've been through a situation like that. There's varying reasons for different things. It's not, about, it's not about judgment. This is just about how many of us want to guess it probably wasn't supposed to be that way. But this spirit says, I want to be empowered. But the enemy lies to us and says, the only way I can get there is I have to rebel and this lie is rooted in rebellion. You can't tell me what to do. Who are you? Get out of my face. I'm going to do, I'm doing me. I'm not worried about what you think. I'm doing my own thing. Well, that sounds strong. That sounds masculine. That sounds manly. That's just wrong. Because our God is a God of order and he's given us everything we need for life and godliness to have staying power in situations where we don't see how we can move forward. And the enemy will tempt you to get into rebellion so that you can feel empowered. And the problem is, guys, you really can feel empowered with the spirit of rejection. You can feel empowered. You won't have everything you need for life and godliness, but you'll feel a sense of power. It's just empty. It just turns us into lesser and weaker than God intended. You can feel a sense of being empowered by a spirit of rebellion, right? Isn't that how a lot of wars start? Isn't that how a lot of fights start? Oh yeah? Bring it. Bam. I feel powerful. The problem is it also eats us up with fear and anxiety. And the hardest thug is always afraid of what's going to happen. At another time, right? It fills us with fear because we tried to be empowered, but the enemy lies to us and says, if you want to be empowered, you need to be emancipated. You need to buck the system, bro. Get out. Anybody hearing me today? It's a lie from the enemy, and I think if the, if the enemy is using this against you, I think the Lord can meet you today. Matter of fact, I know so. Third lie. The third lie, he woke, God woke me up with these four words. Can I tell you how strange it was to wake up in the morning and hear emasculated? Okay, that was not super encouraging. Emasculated, emancipated. The third one that he spoke to me is entitled. Now, entitled has kind of taken on a different, a different definition in modern society. As a matter of fact, if you look at it in the dictionary, the word entitled really just talks about being given a title. Okay, 
So, and I appreciate that, and that's true. So I, I just to be honest with you, that didn't satisfy what I was trying to get. I had to go look in the Urban Dictionary to get what I was looking for. Now, you may not realize there actually is a thing called the Urban Dictionary, and if you just want hours of entertainment, I encourage you to open the Urban Dictionary. Now, something I learned about the Urban Dictionary is that they very freely use profanity to get their point across, and I didn't realize that. So you may or may not want to read that, but I'll... I'd be lying if I didn't say I didn't laugh a little bit, so I just want to be honest and true. Um, in the Urban Dictionary, entitled is defined this way, an attitude, a demeanor, an air of rudeness, ingraciousness, combativeness, especially when making excessive demands for service. See, as men, we want to be empowered because we know there's something to being a man and operating in, in our role, but we get confused because society tells us something and the enemy's lying in our ear and we end up feeling like we're either emasculated or that we need to be emancipated to be empowered or we end up feeling like we need to be entitled and being entitled, all that is, is being rooted in pride. Now, here's the funny thing about the entitled one. It plays both sides of the coin. You can have nothing. You can have nothing. Be dirt poor nothing. And get an entitled attitude that says, everybody owes me something because of what I've been through. Everybody. And here's the, here's the lie of the enemy. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it. Because you owe me. Because that makes me feel I'm going to take it. But here's the funny thing, guys. It's not just that side of the coin. Let's flip the coin. You can be the top dog. You can be at the very top of the organization. You can be the leader. You can be in charge and find your empowerment in an entitlement that says, you better respect me. I'm going to take respect from you instead of earn it because I earned this. I'm entitled to it. It's just pride. That's all it is, guys. And the, the, the world will say, you better get yours while you can, because if you don't, no one's going to give it to you. That comes from this concept. Because we don't believe that anyone's going to help us, and we feel rejected, so we have to rebel, because if we don't, we won't feel empowered because we got to be eat up with pride and make our own way. And the enemy has lied to us, men. And maybe you find yourself in a place where you've been lied to and you feel like the devil's playing you and he's playing you with the pride game. If you've never been there before, I'd like to ask you to check your pulse. See if you're still breathing, still living. I know personally, I've, I've faced all of these at some point at different measures. I don't know about you, but I believe if this is where the enemy's lying to you today, because all you really want is this, I just want to tell you guys that's not going to get it. This, this isn't the answer. And I think the Lord will help you today. As a matter of fact, I know he will. So let's talk about What's the promise? We've, we've talked a few minutes about the lies. Well, being empowered, all right, the definition as given to us in the dictionary has a lot to do with being given authority, being given ability, right? And I agree with all those, absolutely. But true, a true sense of being empowered comes from one source, one. And this might surprise you. Being Truly being empowered is rooted in this. It's rooted in this right here. I don't, you guys may not be ready for it. It's, it's being rooted in love. Now that might have that caught you off guard. Because power, right? Empow boom, empowered. It's the linebacker. Ugh, em right? Isn't that empowered? Well, yeah. But what's the root of it? The kind of, the kind of being empowered that gives us everything we need for life and godliness. The kind of empowerment that makes us be able to face a spirit of rejection and say, no, thank you. 
The kind of empowerment that says when rebellion presents itself, it says it's actually not necessary. The kind of power inside of us when pride creeps in and says that's actually not what I need right now. Empowered to live and be who God has called us to be comes from the source of love. And his name is Jesus. And here's why I tell you that today, men. Our society has tried to separate men from this word. We can't talk about this. We can't talk about this. Listen, if you're cruising down the street and the 80s station is on and a love ballad comes on, you roll your windows up. I know you do. You don't want anybody here, but, you, but you're kind of rocking a little bit. You know? But we can't let anybody know. Right? Y- y- y'all are lying, I'm just telling you. I promise you, if I pull up beside you and you, the window goes up, I know Spandau Ballet is on the radio. Don't play with me! <laughs> we can't talk about love. Because, see, we've been taught in society that love is really what happens between your legs. And at very best, love is what happens between your ears. But men, love is what happens between your shoulders. And there's nothing unmanly about receiving love so that we can give love. It's not soft. It's not soft. Simon, you around here, bro? Where you at, Simon? You're going to hear from Simon later today about the Justice Project and what they're doing. No, see, love is going and rescuing somebody from a life of hell, and they may not even say thank you because they're just so jacked up and hurt. See, love can be tough. Love can be confrontational. It's not soft. But if we are going to be empowered, we have got to invite the Lord to baptize us in love. You don't need to turn here, and I'm almost done, guys. Matthew chapter 3. At this point, Jesus hasn't done anything that's recorded in Scripture as it relates to miracles. At this point in his life, nothing has happened that is super miraculous that he's performed. Great things had happened. I'm not trying to diminish uh, who he is and what he was at this point in, in history. My point is his ministry that we, we classified as had not started yet. And in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus gets baptized. And it says... As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. Now, that's a baptism service. You know what I'm saying? You're like, guys, the lighting's not great. We don't really have any cool videos. Let's just ask God to part the heavens. I'll take it. Happened a little bit at our last encounter service. I hope you didn't miss it. I hope you don't miss it next time. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love. Not who can kick your tail. Not who's a better athlete than your son. Not the guy that's got the best. No, no. This is my son whom I love. In him I am well pleased. Jesus hadn't done anything yet. Men, you have everything you need. For life and godliness. And it's found in love. And can I tell you this? And this as I finish. An emasculated man. Eat up with the spirit of rejection. Doesn't have the capacity that he's supposed to have. To receive love. That will satisfy his soul. So that he can give love. A man eat up with the 
spirit of being emancipated, buck the system, I don't need it, I'm doing me, the man eat up with the spirit of rebellion does not have the capacity to receive the love that God wants to pour out so that he can feel empowered. The man that's eat up with pride and a sense of entitlement that says, I'm going to take it because I deserve it. Whether I feel less than, and that motivates me, whether I feel better than, and that motivates me. The lie is the same. A man eat up with pride is so full that he has no capacity to receive love. And what empowers me? What has given me everything I need for life and godliness? What empowers us to be men is when we receive the love of the Father. Last scripture I'm going to tell you. Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says this, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. When you think about being empowered, I want you to think about being poured into. He's poured his love out into our hearts. Here's my question, men. He's been faithful to pour it out. Do we have capacity to receive it? Or are we full? Or are we full? Or are we full? Man, let's get full. Let's get full. Overflowing. Amen? Close your eyes. I want to pray through these things. Every man in this room. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we come to you. And we say, God, we need you desperately. The enemy has lied to us. He said that we cannot experience love. Love is not for us. It's soft. It's feminine. It has nothing to do with my experience. The problem is everything inside me is dying for it. And so, God, I try to find a way to receive it, and it manifests itself because I reach for it, and I feel like I don't have what it takes, so I feel rejected. I fight my way through it, and I don't get it because I'm operating in rebellion. I feel like I deserve it, so I try to take it, and then I don't get it because I'm operating with pride. But, Lord, today the truth is I really just need it. And Father, we are coming to a place as men that we will humble ourselves and say, God, I, I just need you. Because what I've got's not working. It's just not. So maybe you've dealt with a spirit of rejection or feeling emasculated. Maybe you haven't. I want every man to repeat after me. Father, Father. In Jesus' name, I reject a spirit of rejection, and I receive your love in its place. In Jesus' name. Maybe you've been operating in a spirit of rebellion. Maybe you have felt like that's the only way I could survive. Nathan, you don't understand the upbringing I had. We had to fight to live. I'm not saying those things didn't happen. I'm just saying don't let it into your heart, and if it's made its way, it's it's keeping you from having the full capacity to receive the love of God. And that's what empowers you. So every man, repeat after me, Father, in Jesus' name, I reject a spirit of rebellion. And I receive in its place your love in Jesus' name. Maybe you felt entitled. Maybe you feel like you can just take it. Maybe you've been harsh with your wife. Maybe you've been harsh with your boss. Maybe your employer, your employees, your coworkers, your friends. You feel like you can just take it. You don't have to ask. They owe you. And if that's where you are, let me tell you, you will not have the full capacity to receive the love that he's pouring out, which gives us everything we need. So every man, repeat after me, Father, in Jesus' name, I reject a spirit of pride, and I receive in its place your love. Every man, would you stand across this room?
We're almost done. We're going to have a break and we'll have some really great things happen. As you stand, just, just hold your hands out to the Lord. We're finishing up. I'm going to read this scripture to you again. Just keep your eyes closed. It's not on the screen anyway. Just listen to me read it. His divine power has given us everything we need. I just want you to receive that right now. That doesn't mean we don't need some education or some teaching or some training in some areas. That's not what it's saying. But at the core of who I am, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us as men his very great and precious promises. So that through them you may participate. We may participate in the divine nature. We have what it takes. Having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. We have what it takes. For this very reason men. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness. This is our responsibility. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness. And to goodness knowledge. And to knowledge self-control. And to self-control perseverance. And to perseverance godliness. And to godliness mutual affection. And to mutual affection, here it comes, love. For men, if you possess these qualities in increasing measure. He's given us everything we need. Now it's our job to receive it, to believe it, to empty ourselves of the junk that keeps us from receiving it and ask the Lord to help us to grow up into it. If you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective. It'll keep you from being emasculated. It'll keep you from feeling like you need to be emancipated. It'll keep you from being effective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Final prayer, every man. Father, Father, fill me with your love so that I can give love. Father, come on guys, from your heart, fill me with your love so that I can give love to others in Jesus' name. If you love him with all of your heart, will you give him the best praise you possibly can? Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. We are empowered. We're empowered. We've been empowered. We have everything we need for life and godliness in Jesus' name. Everything we need. Everything we need. We do not lack. God, we, we do not lack. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, men, you can do this. Men, you can do this. You can live holy. You can be a good husband. You can be a good father. You can do this in Jesus' name. And the men said, Hallelujah.